Hey everybody, welcome back. We're in our third lecture over chapter 20 and we're going to start talking about capillary exchange. So at the capillaries, this is where nutrient exchange occurs. So um, nutrients in our blood are going to move into our tissues and then waste products from our tissues can move back into the capillaries and be brought to the proper area proper areas to be um, removed from the body. There are different mechanisms of capillary exchange. Some of these you've already heard of, like diffusion and vesicular transport. Um, and then we have bulk flow, which we'll focus more on. Bulk flow includes both reabsorption and filtration, or filtration and reabsorption, however you want to say it. Um, the factors that affect transport are going to be hydrostatic pressure. Hydrostatic pressure is the pressure that fluids have pushing materials out. So like inside of our capillaries, we have a pressure and that pressure is going to push materials out. And then there's going to be pressure in the interstitial regions that pushes fluids back in. That would be hydrostatic pressure. Colloid osmotic pressure, then, is the pressure that your proteins and your solutes have keeping fluids from moving. So in our blood, we have colloid osmotic pressure associated with albumin and other solutes that holds fluids in. In interstitial regions, there might be other proteins that are going to pull fluids out. And so the net filtration pressure is going to be the difference between the different pressures. And so diffusion, which you should already know, is movement of materials from higher to lower concentration down a concentration gradient, and there's no energy required. So in general, you're going to have oxygen move down a concentration gradient from our capillaries into our tissues. And then you're going to have waste products like carbon dioxide move from higher to lower concentration into our blood. Um, there's going to be hormones. There's going to be nutrients that move via diffusion into our cells. And there's going to be other waste products that will move away from our cells. Diffusion is going to allow for small nonpolar molecules to move. Um, larger solutes can move if we have fenestrated capillaries or if we have sinusoids. Vesicular transport occurs when um, cells use pinocytosis, so um, a form of endocytosis to move fluids into um, the cell. And then, of course, exocytosis would move them out of the cell. And bulk flow, then, is the one that we focus on here. So this one you haven't heard of yet. And so this is movement of large amounts of fluids with dissolved substances and material moves in a direction down a pressure gradient. So depending on the pressures, the, the pressure pushing fluids out and the pressure pulling fluids back in will determine how much materials move. And so two types of bulk flow that we talk about are filtration and reabsorption. Filtration is the movement of fluids um, from our blood capillaries into those interstitial regions. And this is going to occur on the arterial side of a capillary. Reabsorption then is the movement of materials back into our blood capillaries from the interstitial spaces. And this occurs on the venous end of our capillaries. And everything is going to move via, um, or not via, oh, yeah, everything moves um, associated, that'd be a better word, with the different pressures. And so we have hydrostatic pressure and colloid osmotic pressure. So in our blood, 
we have a very high hydrostatic pressure. And this is going to force fluids out along with those um, solutes that are dissolved in the fluids. And on the same side, we have an interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure that is very low. So not um, as much force is pushing fluids from the interstitial regions into the blood, which means we're going to have more fluids leaving than entering. But then um, we have proteins in our blood. Remember those albumins. In our blood, we have a higher colloid osmotic pressure. So fluids um, in our blood, there's a lot of proteins. And as fluid leaves on the arterial end, on the venous end, our, we have a higher protein to fluid ratio than we did on the arterial end. And so that's going to promote reabsorption on the venous end. Interstitial fluid, again, is going to have a lower colloid osmotic pressure. So there's not going to be as much pull of fluids um, by the proteins. And um, as we increase the amount of fluid in the interstitial regions, that um, colloid osmotic pressure would drop even lower. So in general, the fluid that leaves on the arterial end of our capillaries is going to be reabsorbed on the venous end of our capillaries. But there's always a small amount of fluid that doesn't get picked up. That fluid is going to be picked up by our lymphatic system. The lymphatic system then picks up excess fluids. These excess fluids um, are then moved through the lymphatic system. Um, and they're filtered through our lymph nodes so that the lymphatic system not only is returning the fluids, but it's also checking to make sure that the fluids don't have any pathogens in them. And then it dumps that fluid back into our veins. And so let's look at um, the colloid osmotic pressure and the hydrostatic pressure. So on the arterial end, we have a colloid osmotic pressure pulling fluids in, but it, that's not going to be as high as the hydrostatic pressure. And so more fluid is going to be pushed out because of the higher hydrostatic pressure. And so here we're looking at hydrostatic pressure of about 35 millimeters of mercury. And the colloid osmotic pressure on this side is about 25 millimeters of mercury. Colloid osmotic pressure is going to be the same because you don't change the number of proteins, but we've lost fluid, so our hydrostatic pressure is going to lower. <coughs> so if we go to the venous end, now we have a lower hydrostatic pressure and we still have that same colloid osmotic pressure, and so we have reabsorption on this end. And so fluid leaves over here, we have nutrient exchange occurring, and then fluid is reabsorbed over here. The remaining fluid that didn't get reabsorbed is going to be picked up by that lymphatic system and filtered through our lymph nodes, checked for disease or pathogens, and then returned to our blood. I'm going to stop here. I know this is a shorter video, but then we can talk about blood pressure in our next video and how we regulate it, okay? So have a great day. Bye.